You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. This is Detlef Schnitsch and today we dive into the unknown and unexpected deep ocean of the creative mind with Dory. What's your second name, Dory? Abelman. Ebro man. Ebro man. All right. I mean, you have to, to type that later on in my message. With, with Dory Ebro man. So that's Abel, Abel man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, my research is really bad. Hi, Dory. It's great to have you here in Attitude. And um, I'm so excited because I had a chat with Dory last week about my thesis uh shamanism art and digital culture the cause effect actually about that and um dory and myself we have a crossover promotion with his podcast learn for love which is a, a great podcast as well but we come to this actually in the third part um yeah <laughs> very good story <laughs> Um, it's actually the first time that 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 we gonna gonna record that um, um, via Skype because uh, Dory is not in Ireland, West Cork. He's sitting in close to Toronto, actually in Canada. Um, he's part of this media group of this Land for Love media group, as well as uh, he is studying um, bioinformatic. It is actually somehow already my cup of tea as digital shaman and trans Odin. Wow, 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 wow. So I really, I mean, I'm looking forward to speak with him about this subject in order um, to understand how, um, A, how, how art informs, informs science, how science informs art, and especially how um, bio informatic uh, uh, informs um, art and science and vice versa and and, and. so I've got in my background and that, and that's and that story asked me what do you have in my background so Dory what <laughs> what do you think I have in my background um, you have a whole bunch of pictures related to bioinformatics you have sample prep um, which I can see on the bottom like with those those uh, purple gloves I've done that before looks like they're holding a tube with DNA. Um, you have a whole bunch of graphs of uh, mutations or different parts of the DNA, which I've made before in a software package called R. Um, and then you have a question mark made of DNA. That, that's kind of cool. That, I wonder what that's about. <laughs> First of all, hi, Dory. So I, I, think, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really great to have you here. Hello. So introduce yourself maybe a little bit if you want. Yeah, um, thanks so much for having me here. Hi, my name yeah, is Dory, and um, I am based in Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm currently pursuing my master's degree in uh, biology, bioinformatic, and I also help to run a podcast called the Learn to Love podcast, all about building healthy and strong relationships based on psychology and neuroscience. Thanks so much for having me here. Which is very interesting. Yes, I'm really looking forward for for our three part chat. So that's that's it's amazing. It's great. I love, I love this idea to starting a podcast. I mean, we we both come from this direction that 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 we didn't know really what to do uh, due to the COVID, and uh, I think we both start with with this idea to create a podcast. So, uh, how long is your po podcast existing now? 
Um, since July, middle of July, so it's been about two months now, but we already have about 22 episodes, so we're making progress. All right. Okay, cool. So, but we come to that in the third part. First part is actually just about science, art, and bioinformatic. I researched a little bit, and uh, I came along actually, so uh, a thing where I was, I have to ask you, are you a biopunk? What do you mean by bio, biopunk? Uh, um, I, I research biopunk is actually um, uh, it's a subgene of science fiction, closely related to cyberpunk that focuses on the near future, uh, the consequences of the biotechnology revolution following the invention of recombinate recombinant DNA. So oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love it. It's it's quite dark, uh, and it is, uh, it is, it is a side thing from 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 cyberpunk. Actually, I don't know how how um, how well you're informed about cyberpunk. No, I don't know about cyberpunk, no, but I no, do know about no. recombinant DNA. I could talk about that. If I could explain how that works if you're interested. <laughs> wow! Absolutely. Wow, so because. Wow. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. But first of all, I would say um, we should explain the listeners short what is um, bioinformatic in general, because this is quite an interdisciplinary uh, um, field. And uh, how long does it exist, actually? Yeah, so um, bioinformatic has, bioinformatics has been around since the dawn of computers, I'd say in the, the 1960s and 70s. A lot of the formulas that were invented then are, are still used in part today. But it became especially popular over the past 20 years with more technology, a lot of growth in computer power, and also a much deeper understanding of DNA in general. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, I mean it's 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 really mad. It is it is uh, what is it's, it's a combination of of uh, biology, computer science, informatic, um engineering, engineering, mathematics and statistics. Yes. It? Um to analyze and interpret the biological data. Yes. Like the data behind you in those pictures, those those circle graphs. It is actually uh, th this is art. What you see in the background, it is. Um, I was researching a little bit about ah, uh, what is is there any art which represents uh, bioinformatic, and what you see is um, they call it circular uh, genome map canvas prints and you can buy them online actually <laughs> it's quite interesting so wow. if you if you're really getting lost and if, you, if you're looking for 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 a new new job as artist or whatever you can use all your experience and um <laughs> and, uh, uh, and the other ones that, that are uh, uh, circular uh, genetic maps as well mm -hmm. and uh and I found another one that was a DNA question mark on canvas. So, but it's not at the back, you know. I put it probably in the in the, um, in the um, uh, video um, description on YouTube in the later stage, where I put as well images from 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 Dory. He he he, he does painting as well. And what do you say? What was watercolor or, or oil? Uh, acrylic. It, acrylic, acrylic, acrylic. Uh, the paintings, they, they, they looked for me very oily. I mean... Oh, so, I used yeah. acrylic for the ones I sent to you. Um, but yeah, I like oil too. Yeah. I just like acrylic because it dries faster. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, that's that's really... So So you're going to do your master now in in bioinformatic and uh, you you don't know a, a, a lot a lot about, about about writers from 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 the science fiction in in regarding biopunk and um the subject actually yeah mm -mm. no so I'm, not, not, I'm not familiar with that 
You never heard of it. I mean, I must say, I really, I researched today about that, and I must, I must have a look where 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 I'm gonna have it. Um, it is. Um, uh, as I just read it out. So, bio, biopunk uh, is a portman portman theory of biotechnology or biology and punk. It's a subgene of science fiction that focuses on biotechnology. It is derived from cyberpunk, but focused on the implications of biotechnology rather than information technology. Biopunk is concerned with synthetic biology. It is derived of cyberpunk involving biohackers. So you're not a biohacker either. Right? I'm not a biohacker, but I'm familiar with, with what that is. So, so, so what, what, is, what is your special speciality, actually? So then... Um, I work essentially with, with genetic data um, from people who have cancer to learn about what's going on in their bodies and which drugs could be the most effective for them. Also things like how we can learn who is going to, um, who's going to get better, who's going to be, get worse, um, how we need to adjust the medication, uh, all that. I'm, I'm trying to... to discover what we can learn essentially from from the the dna of, of people who experience some forms of cancer wow wow are you are you, are you researching on your own or um <clears throat> are you working for a company uh, i work for a university uh group essentially and it's a it's a it's a lab it's a collaboration with many um labs um and yeah, it's a lot of people, but also just in, in general around the world, there's a lot of people who, who work on this and collaborate together. Well, probably a lot, a, lo a lot of that happens online as well, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, through meetings on, on, uh, yeah, also like Skype and phone calls and, and sharing papers. Did you, did you start with it before COVID or, or was it just coming out, out? I mean, probably nowadays it's, it's more, more popular, but, but how was it in 2019, for instance? Um, the field was very similar um, to what it is now. So I was working on it before COVID too, but uh, a big difference now is a lot more things are online. For example, we used to have a lot of in-person conferences, like you would fly out to Europe from North America or to another city to meet people. Um, but now a lot of those conferences are just being held online, um, which I think is actually really nice because the, the fees have gone down a lot too. You no longer need a plane ticket to go to a conference. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean you're, you're, you're far more flexible, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, and a lot of it's also recorded now and they just put it on YouTube or something for you to learn about it later. It's mad, isn't it? Information is definitely becoming more accessible, I'd say today. I mean, especially so. So, if if this this subject is already twenty percentage of your job, I mean, statistic and information, isn't it? So, so you're you're probably um, very very familiar with with how how can I push the information, bring this information to other people and then, and I mean, with all the media, probably what, what you, what you have. Yeah. I wouldn't say media so much as much as like also just emails, like emailing, uh, information, um, asking questions, arranging, arranging meetings, um, like to talk about it. And then usually we share information through, um, journals, like academic journals. So you'll put, You'll put your data there, and then another group can use that for their own work. Like Lancer, for instance, isn't it? Which one? Lancer, L-A-N-C-E-R. I think it's it's one of of the of the main academical journals. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Let me search it up. I don't. Um. I don't know. Um. Lancer, but but yeah, there there's lots of them that are, yeah, are very yeah, big. Pro probably. That's great. I was wondering um, if you guys, I mean, for me, as, as I, for instance, as I read today about biopunk, I mean, I, I knew as well about biohackers and, and I mean, this, this science fiction genre, but I, I didn't, didn't research a lot of that. I mean, I started actually 
the last days as I had this chat with you about it, going as well back deeper into the subject, because I mean it is a it is a very it is a very can be a very dark subject, you know, and and uh, I think I mean art art helps. It's funny, so even if if I if if I read this uh, dystopian stories. It touched me still somehow. I don't know why. I have to admit, you know. So, what happens to you if you if you research in in this field? I mean, it is it is um, uh, it was very unethical subject, isn't it? I mean, um, I mean, it can uh, like anything. It's a tool. It can be used for good things or bad things. I can speak, for instance, about um, biohacking. So, um, there's this whole idea today that you can change the DNA of uh, an organism through this recombinant technology, which you were talking about. Um, but the idea is you can, you can change the DNA. So in, in some cases, uh, you can use it for good things. For example, if there is DNA that causes a disease, you can change that DNA so that they don't get the disease, for example. Um, With CRISP, no? C-R-I-S-P. That's the PR, yeah, CRISPR Cas9. It's a it's a technology where a bacteria essentially um, changes the the DNA um, based on an enzyme, based on a tool that bacteria use to protect themselves from viruses. Um, but but the thing is, but but what how you change the DNA can be used for good or bad, right? So for example, uh, tomatoes, um, the the at the, at the supermarket. A lot yeah. of them have genes that come from Arctic fish to make them able to grow in colder weather, which mm -hmm. increases the length of time you can grow tomatoes, which is good because it makes the cost of tomatoes lower overall. Yeah. Um, but there are people who are trying to use this technology to make themselves more intelligent or have different attributes. It's not as common. I mean, this doesn't really happen in the academic research space it's more people doing it at home in their garage um but that's what Do the they? term refers to yeah so 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 that means they that 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 are the biohackers already somehow they 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 start to 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 experiment with with tomatoes and then all of a sudden uh the arts becomes true and and we we got we got this horror movies uh, uh the 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 the, the bio tomato strike back and yeah i mean i don't think it's possible for that to actually happen in real life given the amount of genes involved in basic behaviors but um, and also, it's mostly unsuccessful, even for biohackers, like maybe one in a million times, they actually get the result they were looking for. Um, but, but, um, not yet, not yet. I don't not know yet. if it's even possible in the future, but, but yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe if the, if the, if the, if the, if we start to, to, um, combine breeding a, a tomato with a, with a lion or so. And then well, they, they, they wouldn't be compatible. They, you no, wouldn't no. get an offspring. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was joking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But if they were compatible, that would be quite a funny experiment, like interesting thing to see what happened. Yeah, but, 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 but that's, that's the stuff where, where move is coming from. And, uh, and yeah. that's, that's the stuff where art is coming from as well, isn't it? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. To, to, and, and then as well, so. So it is. I mean, I've got I've got here a quote I would like to 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 read out. It is from from um, from Mondrian, Pete uh, Mondrian, so from figurative art and non-figurative art. And he said, "For there are made laws, discovered laws, but also laws a truth for all time. These are more or less hidden in the reality which surrounds us and do not change. Not only science, but art also shows us that reality, at first incomprehensible, gradually reveals itself by the mutual relations that are inherent in things. So, so that's, I mean, I find that always very, 
very um interesting i mean i mean how how art strikes back i mean i mean if if, if like Jules Verne, for instance so 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 this 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 when when did he wrote his stars 1800 or so how many um ideas from from his stories came true isn't it i mean uh so 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 if you work on on, on this field what happens with you sometimes i mean if you if you're sitting there and 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 if you're looking in, into a microscope um well i i use a microscope to check on experiments um so sometimes i check to look at cells to see how dense they are how much they are in a flask or sometimes i would stain cells i would like um put make it so different parts of the cells light up certain colors to see um if a, a drug or a medicine changed something in the cell um, yeah. but that's really interesting what you said because uh, in that quote because it talks about learning from the natural world which is largely what scientists do uh, it's, it's finding ways to learn from from the natural world and to make associations uh, to try to derive in a sense rules um, of how things work based on what we see. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've, I've like I say, I, I find it amazing. I mean, it's, that's that's actually how I work. If I if I try to get closer to the subject, I really try to research as well, very deep into into science, you know. And and eventually, I I do things like hanging upside down from a tree just in order to see uh, the world in a different perspective. And all of a sudden something happens you know which is amazing as well you know so that's great i love it i love it dory i uh, thank you very much mm -hmm. i mean we already time flies and uh we're already at the end of the first uh part of our attitude and dear listeners if you like what you hear just uh, turn in next time Take care. Fantastic. Bye Take bye. Care. Bye. <laughs> this is a listener supported show. I feel honored if you subscribe to this show. You can follow me non financial with the following click on one of my Instagram accounts or subscribe the visual version of this podcast on YouTube via the link below. If you like what you hear, be sure to tune in next Wednesday for the next Attitude Talk with a special guest. If you want to leave a donation for a coffee or a bus ticket, just follow the donation link via the Attitude Podcast account. Eventually, I would like to thank, through this medium, all my members and listeners of the I Love West Cork Artists Network from all over the world, just to remember myself that without you, this year couldn't and wouldn't happen. You have listened to Artitude, West Cork's first art, fashion and design podcast. Attitude, never so close again. Ah. That was too close.